and um, and share my screen. And you don't really need to see my email. Okay. So, um, oh, let me copy this into the chat. So I've copied into the chat um, a, uh, a link to the Google Doc that uh, I'll be using to kind of focus our, um, our activity this afternoon. Um, basically, I want to talk a little bit about different ways that we uh, have outside of this interactive video um, activity to use web video in our Moodle courses. So that when we talk about uh, setting up the interactive video um, activity type, you can see how it compares to um, to what we uh, what we already have. So, uh, in uh, thanks, Marie. Um, so, if you want to play along at home, uh, you need a Moodle course, which you should all have. Uh, you should have a link to a YouTube video that you would be interested in creating a um, interactive video activity around and and some questions, either real questions about the video or just fake questions, which is what I'm going to be doing uh, with uh, the examples I'm going to be setting up because uh, I'm too fried at this point in the week to actually come up with real questions. So let me just, um, oh, I should have, I'm going to stop sharing and I'm going to start sharing again um, with sharing my computer sound so that when I'm actually playing um, a YouTube clip or video clip, you can hear what's going on. Okay, so... Um, Let's say that uh, for my Mars class uh, next spring 2021, I want my students to to watch this uh, clip from the Griffith Observatory about these two different structures. Uh, there's been a lot of interest in recent years on the development of uh, on the observation of recent gully activity and these things called RSLs or re recurring slope linear. So this is a this is like a five and a half minute long video that is a um, segment of a larger uh, uh, program, obviously that the Griffiths Observatory did uh, for their public outreach. They clipped out this piece on these two things. And it's maybe a good resource for my my Mars students to watch. I will say, you know, at five minutes and forty one seconds, it's a it's a good length uh, for uh, keeping students engaged already. Uh, but uh, we'll still go ahead and wrap some interactive uh, video uh, activity elements around it. Um, you know, it just basically, it's got the some water has carved heads, out it's got, water flowing in great amounts on Mars. got some minerals. images, The little bit they... Okay. And you really don't need five minutes and 41 seconds of, of Mars uh, in your life this afternoon. But let me just uh, say that, uh, pretend this is my Mars class for spring 2021. I actually have a number of different ways that outside of the interactive um, content activity that I could decide to incorporate that video into my Mars class. I just want to run through them very quickly. You don't have to uh, play along at home for this part. Turn editing on. Um, so if I go back to this YouTube clip, I've got the web address for, um, for the clip. Easiest way and the way a lot of faculty would put this video into their course is just to add it into a label resource right on the front page. So if I click add a activity or resource, uh, I can select label, I can click add. Um, I can um, you know, put in a short little 
title. I'm not even going to take the time to copy over the YouTube title for the workshop this afternoon. Uh, paste in um, the YouTube, uh, paste in the link to the YouTube page. And in this case, since I'm working in Chrome, it automatically turned it into a link. Link. If you're working in a browser, that would just paste in the uh, the URL. You would want to use the link tool to actually turn that text into an actual link. Whenever Moodle sees a link in any kind of Moodle text to a YouTube page, and if that page is uh, tagged to be embeddable by the owner of the video, then uh, Moodle will convert this link to the YouTube page into an actual embedded video. And many of you are probably already familiar with the, you know, this approach. So uh, that's you know obviously an easy, very easy way to add web video to your to your courses. Doesn't provide a lot of context. You can instead um, you could add this as a page. You know, watch this video. The advantage of doing this as a page, a couple of advantages of doing this as a page is, um, you know, watch this, vi here's the, this video discusses, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You know, keep a track of the evidence for the water not being involved in these two um, structures. Then if you put the, um, Link to the YouTube video. Again, Moodle is going to change this into an embedded text. Uh, and then you could say, what is the evidence that water is not involved? And if I click Save and return to the course, uh, one advantage of this is that it doesn't clutter up my um, course front page with an embedded video. We've, Marina, I have seen um, Moodle front pages where there are just dozens of embedded YouTube videos and it takes forever for those pages to load, especially on some of the connections that students have. But they'd be able to click on the link to the page resource and they would see your initial des description, uh, framing what you want them to look at. They could play the embedded video. They would have, uh, so this provides a little bit more context. It's one thing to have the embedded video there on the front page, but this way you can do a little bit more contextual, contextualization around the video. And that, that just is helpful. Um, Similarly, I won't go through both of these, but you could um, you could add an assignment or a discussion forum. And if you add it as an assignment, you can say, you know, comment on this video assignment. And in the description, say, you know, watch this video. Boom. And then describe the evidence that water is not involved. And then you've turned this actually into an assignment activity. Um, for this, I probably would just want the students to submit online text right into Moodle rather than having them write this up as a, as a, uh, like a Word document that they upload. Uh, it now becomes a graded um, activity. So, you know, you can actually provide, assign points to it. And if I click save and display, that that video is going to be embedded there. Students can come into the assignment. They can watch it. They'll have their um, you know submit your you know your text, and you can collect their actual submissions. Same thing. I won't bother setting up a discussion forum, but you could embed the video into the 
into the description of the discussion forum and have you know your students actually use the discussion forum to discuss. So there's lots of ways to use video. Um, the reason what makes um, the um, what makes the interactive content approach to in, an interactive uh, video is that it allows you to have the video in your course in an embeddable player and allows you to overlay interactions. Um, so at any point when you want to stop the video and ask the students a question or present them some information, you know, or just, you know, do something to make sure that they're still engaged with the video, you can do that uh, and have those attached to specific points um, on the on the timeline for the video which is a it's nice especially if you're if you're talking about having students uh, remain engaged for say a 25 minute long video if you just expected them to play that through uh, without something maintaining their engagement uh, studies have shown that their engagement is going to drop off very quickly after six seven minutes or so uh, but if you know you can come to a natural point in the video pause the video have them respond to some questions uh, that's a way to keep them engaged so that's that's the essential um, uh, what we're talking about here so uh, what we'll do today is just kind of walk through the process and give you some time to actually do it as well I uh, won't spend a lot of time talking about H5P, but it's just a, a way to develop some of these kinds of interactive um, activities uh, for websites. And Moodle at its core is basically a website. So these um, interactive authoring tools uh, can you know, be incorporated into our Moodle system as well, which is what we've done. I will just point out quickly uh, we won't go. Um, we won't go through this in depth. You, it, you might want to spend uh, a, a little bit of time going to the H5P site. Um, we're talking specifically about one kind of interactive content, but if you go to the H5P site, you could create a free account there if you want. I actually have a, a free account here. Uh, if you go to the examples and downloads, you'll see that in addition to interactive video and you know branching scenario course presentation, there's all these other kinds of pre-packaged interactive content types that other people have created and just um, contributed to the site here. And many of these are available in our Moodle system. Also, if you do create an account here, you can actually create your interactive activities here, download them as H5P uh, uh, files, and then import them into our Moodle um, interactive content activity. And each one of these sites, like for the interactive video, will have some examples. So I won't take the time to play through here, but you know this example would show you some of the different kinds of interactions that you could put into your interactive video, and we'll talk about those as well in the workshop. There's a couple of different um, examples, and there is also, for most of these act activities, a tutorial at the H5P site that will step you through, you know, step by step how to use it. So we'll talk about m many of these things in the workshop today, but you know, if you want to ever come back and go through the tutorial in more depth, then uh, it will walk you through the steps. And these steps for this uh, tutorial are the same things you could apply to setting up the activity in Moodle. So, um, let me just go into my course here and um, show you how this is set up. So if you, again, go into your course, turn uh, editing on, and uh, decide where you want to add this interactive content activity to. You click on the activity chooser, 
and it's here available as uh, this interactive content uh, activity. I put a little H5P icon on there to kind of uh, uh, remind you that this is, uh, we're talking about H5P activities here. Uh, click OK, click Add, and um, you're adding an activity just like you would be adding an assignment activity with a couple of uh, differences. So I want to talk first about uh, some of the basic Moodle settings and then how you can tell uh, Moodle that what you want to do is an interactive video and then we'll see what that looks like. So there's a description here. Um, the description is not required, but um, I'll just put in a quick one, Mars Gully interactive video. And um, I'll skip over this for now, but uh, there would be many of the same kinds of Moodle settings. You know, are you, is this going to be a graded activity? Uh, is it going to be in some category in the grade book? What's it going to be uh, in terms of the grade? Um, are you going to show it right away? Or are you going to hide it from your students? So all of the typical kind of Moodle uh, settings would be there. But in the middle here, you have, um, I mean, you need to think of this as just basically an, a, uh, an interactive content container. And then you have to tell uh, Moodle and the activity what kind of a container, what kind of an activity it's going to be. And you can create content uh, from the uh, uh, content types that we already have available in Moodle. Or as I said, if you have gone to the H5P site, created an activity and downloaded the H5P um, file, you could just upload that directly and Moodle will uh, take that activity and bundle it into your Moodle course. But I'm going to say the default here, I'm going to create content and I'm going to select this interactive uh, video uh, option. And it's at the top of my list because I've been using it a lot lately, you know, prepping for the workshop. Uh, I'm going to um, bring over the title. I'm going to put that title here. And um, also under the interactive video here, there's a place to put the title. Um, you can actually put in a short description as well. I'm going to actually move this part down under the description. One nice thing about this, um, well, I'll, I'll get to that in a minute. Um, so um, what else? Behavioral settings. Uh, this uh, interactive content activity now knows that this is uh, interactive video. And so you could actually start the video at a particular time if you wanted to. You could loop the video. You can, um, by default, the interactive uh, video activity will have buttons when you put in an interactive element for showing the solution if it's a, like a quiz question or a retry button if it's a quiz question. You can um, you know, set or not set any of these items here. Um, so I have gone to the activity chooser. I have selected an interactive content activity. I have selected that it's going to be an interactive video. And here, this provides links to the tutorial and the examples. These links here go back to that page, those pages I showed you at the H5P site. So if you are in Moodle and you're adding an interactive video and you don't remember how to do something, you can click on this tutorial link and it'll take you to the tutorial at the H5P site. Okay. 
So uh, creating the activity is a three-step process. Um, step one is to tell uh, the activity what video you're going to have in the player. And then step two is to overlay your interactive elements on top of it. And step three is um, the summary task is like asking one or more multiple choice questions at the end of the video. Um, so your first step after setting up this interactive video is to click uh, here to add a video. And uh, we would prefer that um, you make you point to videos that are elsewhere because Moodle you could if you have a video file and it's not too large you can upload it and create the assignment around that but Moodle's really not a dedicated video server so if the video is already here on YouTube and YouTube is a dedicated video server it's much better just to go ahead and paste the YouTube link in nope let's go back and get the link And um, so it's you know basic YouTube uh, link. Uh, you want to keep this nice and simple. Uh, click insert, and um, the activity knows it's a YouTube video. What I think is nice is that it makes it very easy for you to be a good citizen. There's this edit copyright right below the, the video source there. And I can come back here and I can bring over the title. And I can give the Griffith Observatory some cred for having, for, oh, come on, I just want to copy. There we go. And um, this was 2016, so I can put in 20 of the year. I can put in the source. And I assume that this is uh, just a standard YouTube license, but they didn't make it clear. So I will leave this as undisclosed because I'm not sure that it's a, um, I'm not sure whether it's public domain or whether uh, Griffith Observatory has put some Creative Commons license on it. So I'll just leave that as undisclosed at this point. And um, at this point, you know, I can close this down. I've got the, the video source. Uh, I could go on right now and add interactions and the summary task. But since we're in the workshop here, I'm going to actually save my work so far and give you an idea of what it looks like to be uh, at this point. So I'm going to click Save and Return to Course. And um, it shows up on the front page as this interactive content activity. When you or students click on it, it will open up into that interactive content. Uh, it will load the video player. And, um, you know, there's a play button. There's a, a, a scrubber button that will allow you to scrub through the timeline. There aren't any interactions here yet because we haven't added any. So, uh, but I just wanted to show you um, that it's there. Now on Mars itself. Um, there are, um, um, you know, there's uh, options for controlling the playback speed. You can control the volume, so forth. Um, not sure I don't see anything about closed captions, uh, so I might not have picked one that's well captioned, but um, it's just for the workshop here. So um, that was step one, basically. Well, step zero is determining that the interactive content activity is going to be a, an interactive video. Step one is pointing it at a YouTube video. And... Um, 
And uh, then the next steps would be to edit the settings on that activity to go back in. So I can come over here and click edit settings. I could go back out to the front page and select edit settings from there. And I am back in the, um, the activity. And once everything loads, I'll see that the next steps are to add interactions. So I'll click over to that next step and I will get um, I will get a palette of interactive elements across the top here. And I have a uh, timeline scrubber where I can go to the point in the video where I want to add something. And then I can pull down the kind of interaction that I want to add. So just to go through here, you could put a text box. So maybe there's something that uh, was confusing in the video or there's something that they mentioned something in the video that relates back to uh, something that you're talking about in class. You could have a text box with, um, you know, remember this relates to what we were talking about um, for such and such topic show up on top of the video for say 10 seconds as the video is going through that time period. There are, uh, you, can, you can add additional images. Um, for the um, interactive quizzing, um, they, there is what they call a single choice set, which is essentially a multiple choice question. A multiple choice uh, item, which would be a multiple select. So you could have a question that's got, you know, four answers, two of them are correct, and you want students to select both of them. You can add a true false question. You can add a fill in the blank question. Um, so drag and drop and other, other question types here. I really don't know what Crossroads is because I haven't played with it. I'll have to play with it at some point to figure out what's going on. But I mean, the basic approach would be, and again, I'm not going to deal with any kind of realistic questions, say that at, um, at two minutes and 20 Here, seconds, generally in the spring and you want to pause the video and ask them a single choice set question, which is uh, your standard multiple choice question. I would just grab that, drag it down onto the, onto the screen, place it somewhere, I'm gonna put it over here, and then um, you can edit this single choice set question. It will, by default, take the um, time point in the video that you uh, are stopped at as the beginning of the display time and will uh, display it by default for 10 seconds. I'm going to leave that for now. Um, you have the option uh, as to whether this interactive element pauses the video or not. Uh, for a, if you want the students to answer this question, you definitely want to pause the video. Otherwise, you know, it might play through. They might not click on that little um, icon uh, during that 10 minute display period. And then the video will go past and they won't have answered the question. So you want the uh, video to pause when you're having students look at any of these things, uh, you know, click pause the button. The default is to have it show up as a button. Um, and I'm going to leave that. Um, and again, I'm not going to be very creative this afternoon. I'm just going to call this uh, untitled single choice set. And uh, here is the question. And the, um, for the single choice, uh, they're expecting one correct answer. And so you need to put that at the top uh, as your first choice. This is the correct answer. And then you can have as many alternates as you want. Uh, also incorrect. 
and maybe you know have another incorrect and you can actually have uh, multiple questions here so i'm going to uh you know second question and i'm going to say i'm getting really lazy here i'm going to say c and not c for not correct and another not c you could add a third question if you want you could add a fourth question uh, you can define you know if they get uh, you can define different feedback ranges if you want and give them feedback um, there are different um, behavioral settings you can apply to the interactive question itself and i'm going to click done and again uh, for the workshop purposes i'm going to click save and display and um, now what you will see is uh, the video is loaded into the video player there's now a little um, indicator that there is an interactive element here if i come over here hang out and okay maybe not tapping it and drinking it because it's going to be really briny and salty but still interesting you think the place of liquid water well a study's come out and let's take a look at some more i think we've got another yeah, one do. here um and and you can see the time going by the the, the date is a so we're coming up on the time when this so has been added to the video these appear generally in the spring and then boom and the video pauses students see this little marker here they click on it um I'm going to be a, uh, a not very engaged student. I'm going to just click on this one. And, uh, okay, and then it's going to go to the next one. I'm going to click on that one. And uh, it's going to give me, um, I got one out of two. I can retry, I can show the solutions, or I can just click continue. Summertime, especially and on the video uh, would walls continue. that are facing the sun. So facing the side so the that's coming from, they were seeing uh, a lot of. I mean, that's the basic adding uh, an interactive video. I'm going to uh, interactive question. I'm going to. Um, oh, uh, I was going to point out that when I hit continue on that, the little indicator for the question remained on the screen for quite some time because, um, you know, I had left that as the default. In summertime. So if I um, click here to edit this, I can go back in to edit the question. And um, I really don't need that button displaying on the video for 10 seconds because it's going to display right here and pause the video. Students are going to click on that to answer the questions. And then when they click continue, there's no reason to have that button on the screen for another nine and a half nor nine and three quarters seconds so um, you know you can cut that down to a second and uh, you know, save that interactive element I can come in here a little bit further on stop the video here and uh, drag down a true false question again i want to pause the video um, again i don't really want it to go for 10 seconds in this case um, this is cool is the statement and then is that statement true or false well i'm just going to say it's a true statement click done i have added a uh, true false uh, um, element there um, i could come over here further into the video and say that i want to add a multiple choice 
question. Again, I'm, uh, this is something that I'm going to be grading the students on. I want them to do it. I'm going to click pause video. I'm going to say 46 here. Um, this is a multiple choice. Here is the question. Um, in, in this case, you can just add, you know, here's a correct answer. Click it. And I'll say it's correct. This one is incorrect. And I will leave it unselected. I'll add another option. You know, another correct answer that you should click. And I'll say that that one's correct. And I'll add another incorrect one. And um, click done. So now I have um, I have a video where I have added three interactive questions. If I go back here, um, I could bring down a text box. And in this case, I might want to display it as a poster. For this case, I might want to actually have it um, go for 10 seconds, but I don't want to actually pause the video and uh, say, you know, here's an interesting fact. Click done. So let's go uh, save and display, see what this looks like. And um, you see, these show up as um, pausing events where there are things that the students will need to respond to in order for the video to play through. Here's where uh, the text is showing up. So if I play this, something's cascading. We will have the video playing. Things are clearly happening now. Between 1999 and 2006, this event happened. And there was no liquid water flowing in great amounts on Mars between then and, and 2005. Uh, so, so this what will could be stay happening? on the screen for we 10 thought seconds. Maybe CO2 could be moving it. Frozen carbon dioxide as it sublimes off the surface um, could be creating these away. flows. That's no the pausing best of the video, we have. et cetera. Well, finally, we come up here to the true false question. and took high resolution photos of these to see their locations. Now, some of these are located in areas like here. This is a little ridge um, in the middle of the valley, like a mountain peaking up. Some of these are- And it pauses, students can click on this, they get a true false question, they just have to basically pick one or the other. And uh, check. They can continue. Located not along the walls, but same thing with the you know multiple select question. It's just not seeping from underneath. It's probably coming directly from the atmosphere. Valles Marineris does have I forget how many Olympic swimming pools. So um, you know here is a question where you've got more than one correct answer. If I select this one but don't select that one, and I click check. Um, I'll only get one out of the two points because I haven't uh, selected both of the correct answers. It's worth of water okay. down in it, but it's a, a large number. But to get that much of it onto the sides of the walls and in these recurring slope linear, it's a little difficult. So they still have. Um, so just um, if I go back in to edit the uh, sign the activity again. You know, it's going to load. I've got the video. I've got interactions. Let me just say that you can finish off the video with um, adding what are called summary statements. And basically, um, you have um, 
you, you can have some kind of descriptor up here and then have a series of statements. Some of them are correct. Well, in, in, this, in the um, summary statement, one is going to be correct. The others are not going to be. They're kind of like uh, multiple choice questions that you can add at the end. You can have more than one of these statements. And um, I won't bother going through to adding them, but uh, they would could be part of it. Um, so at this point, Marie, I don't know if have, have there been any questions in the chat. Not specifically about this. There's just more um, questions about maximum time length for a video. Um, well, see, the, like the nice thing about uh, pointing to a YouTube video, it is the time length. Well, there's no maximum time length. It's whatever the, the time length of the video is, that video will be played through the player in your Moodle course, but the video is going to be at YouTube. And so if the question is more in terms of what's a, a reasonable length of video to use before your students totally turn into zombies, um, uh, if without these kind of interactions, I personally wouldn't do much more than seven or eight minutes. But if you are using these interactions to stop the video, to get the students to think about something, to get them to respond, you can use much uh, longer videos and keep students engaged throughout the whole process. Also, this is a, now a graded activity rather than just you know watch this video. Um, and so that also helps to keep the students engaged. Question about um, can you embed links from Vimeo in the same way as you're doing from YouTube? Uh, that is uh, on the agenda as well. Um, so actually, uh, that's next on the agenda. So I mean, you can go through here. Basically, we've we've added uh, interactive content activity. We have determined. We have told um, the the H five P activity is going to be an interactive video content. We've added the video. We've added interaction elements. Uh, we've talked about adding statements to the end. For other vi video sources, like uh, this TED Talk, I go to the TED Talk here and go to um, come on, load to the share here. If you take this link and try to use this link in the interactive video activity, you will get uh, media not supported error message. But uh, for many TED Talks, it gives you the ability to download the TED Talk as an MP4 file. And then uh, when you go into um, the part where you are adding the video, In, well, uh, instead of where instead of where I, I pasted in the um, link to the YouTube video, there was an option for uploading your video file, and certainly you can do that. Again, if you've got a video file that is an hour and a half long and it's three quarters of a gigabyte in size, uh, I really wouldn't recommend using that because Moodle is just going to choke and. Um, and we're going to get uh, nasty tisk tisk uh, from our friends in CTS who are trying to maintain the uh, the server uh, storage uh, for us for for that. But uh, this, uh, I, I believe, this um, like fifteen minute TED talk was like uh, one hundred and twenty megabytes or so or so. Um, so you could you could do that approach. Same thing for Vimeo. Uh, if you um, just got the um, the link to the Vimeo video, uh, you're also and you, and you plug that in, you're going to get the same kind of um, media not supported message. At least I did on this one. Uh, it might be worth 
uh, playing around with some other Vimeo uh, videos. But again, you have on many of these ability to download. And this is just like a 33 second long video or no, I forget how long it is. Yeah. Uh, and so, you know, this was like 10 megabytes. Uh, so very easily um, uploaded into the activity. Uh, it, There's, oh, go ahead. I mean, if you uh, are pointing to videos at um, Alexander Street Press, you know, the Avon video database, uh, the web link doesn't work. And obviously, they're not going to let you download the video. So you cannot wrap the interactive video around, um, you know, uh, some one of those database videos. Uh, there's another question in the chat. Can you ask for a response to a concept or an event in a video from students that you can evaluate later or that can be graded because they simply responded like a discussion forum? Yeah. Um, I mean, you no, no, it really doesn't have like short answer question format as an interact as an interactive element. If you wanted to do that, uh, what I would do basically is come back here to um, embed the video in an actual discussion forum activity and have, or, or an assignment, it depends on what you mean by you want them to respond in kind of a more open-ended fashion that you can grade later. Uh, one of these two, you know, regular Moodle activities probably would be a better uh, suited for that. These these interactive elements. I mean, if you look at it, um, the, uh, the this is the palette of interactive elements, and they really are just meant to foster engagement, to provide additional perspective on the video. Um, you know, maybe uh, when they're talking about the um, when they're showing pictures of these streaks showing up in the springtime and discussing whether or not they're uh, evidence of water seeping or something else, you could overlay a diagram of you know uh, what of uh, how water coming out from the subsurface and flowing down the hill would would lead to that. So those are the kinds of things you can do, um, but not not really kind of open-ended things. Okay. So I haven't really given you a lot of time to play along at home. Um, uh, Keith, can you can you just show how um, closed captions is still on and available via YouTube within that activity? Um, actually, I'm not, we'd have to, I have to check that because when I'm looking at the player here, let me check over here. Uh, yeah, closed captions is available. So we'll have to see whether or not uh, there is an option for, let's go over here. for hydrated minerals. The little bit they see is actually in some I mean, of the feelings that was probably made three to, or four billion um, years ago when Mars was wet. So no evidence. Add a comment to the discussion forums at h5p.org uh, or maybe it's a Moodle, discuss, Moodle community discussion forum about, you know, what about closed captions on these videos? Because I don't see an option in the player here that allows you to toggle the closed captions on and off from the player. So um, this is just the video quality and this is the playback rate. So I mean that that could be an issue. Uh, it's you know not best practice not to have um, the captions there. Um, uh, it's an issue. Uh, let me just finish off um, in the time we've got just to show you what it looks like from a student perspective. So let me uh, pop open uh, a student account here.
So I mean, students will also see where the interactive elements are. Um, I don't know that there's a way to hide that. There might be in some of the behavior settings. Uh, but the if you're asking you know an interactive question at this point that deals specifically with the content that's being covered here, it's not like the student's going to be able to come straight here and answer the question and uh, without having um, watched through the video. But I'm just going to, in the interest of time, scrub through anyway. And Salty, but still interesting. You think place of liquid water. Well, a study's come out. And let's take a look at some more. I think we've got another yeah, one do. here. Um, and, and you can see the time going by. The, the, the date is in the upper corner. So these appear generally in the spring and summer. So again, uh, click here. And I didn't obviously do very good on that one, but I'll get this one correct and um, go continue. Summertime, especially on uh, walls that are facing. Here, this is a little ridge um, in the middle of the valley, like a mountain peaking up. Some of these are. And I'll get this one correct. Located not along the walls, but along sort of free. Let me come here. It's just not seeping from underneath. It's probably coming directly from the atmosphere. Valles Marineris does have, I forget how many Olympic swimming pools. And I'll select this one and this one. And I got one right and one really wrong. And it averages out to zero here. With the water down in it. But it's a, a large number. And but then if I come up here, I'm just going to kind of go over to the end. And oops, there should be a submit your answers here. So I'm going to have to look into that. Um, the students would then click on the submit the answers and it would go into the grade book. So um, that was working last night. Let me take a look and see what's going on here. But anyway, that's the idea. You can um, wrap the, we basically overlay this layer of interactive elements uh, at appropriate times throughout the video in a way that um, allows or facilitates the students remaining engaged with the video, responding to questions, looking at additional materials that you overlay over the top of it. And with that, um, with that, I think that is just, you know, something um, I would recommend that you play around with it. Uh, if you have any questions about getting them set up, there are a couple of things that obviously I'll follow up on. The closed caption thing, I'm not sure that there's going to be anything that's going to be an easy fix for that. I'm not sure why that um, submit uh, button uh, didn't show up uh, the way it's supposed to. With that, though, I think I will stop the sharing and um, yeah, well, there is a there's an actual uh, link um, um, item. So let's see um, how that would work. So let me go back into here as myself, not as a student. And um, come in here and edit the settings. Come into the add interactions. And uh, let's Let's come here someplace where I don't have a lot of stuff yet. And in years ago when Mars was wet. So no down a link. And what it's going to ask for is, uh, you know, a link out. 
and again maybe pause the video so that um students will uh, actually have a chance to click on it. It's going to be on the screen for 10 seconds anyway. If I click done, um, click save and display. And then advance to that point in the video. It is actually in some of the tailings and was probably made three, four billion years ago when Mars was wet. So click link out and it's going to go to your uh, your survey or whatever other um, more extensive or, or maybe. Um, yeah, it could go actually to a, a Moodle assignment or, you know, to some uh, some place with a new Moodle course uh, uh, opening up in a new page or it could go out to a survey or some other uh, other page that you want to take the students to at that point in the video. And then when they're finished, they can close that page. Um, so no evidence in these continue. goalies for liquid water. So the carbon dioxide mechanism mm -hmm. performs. So that's a good question. Yeah, it would. Uh, it creates an item in the grade book, and um, uh, by automatic. Well, if you let's share the screen again. Um, You know, by default, when you're setting this up, if under grade, you leave the default as, um, well, uh, actually, it, you don't have the option of it not being a graded item. So if you add one of these interactive videos and it is, uh, you know, supposed, supposed to be tracking student, uh, clicks on those uh, interactions and you set up a, uh, you know, you set this up, it's going to create an item in the gradebook. And um, you know, assuming that I figure out what's, why the, um, student submit button didn't show up when the students submit um, their scores from the interactive uh, video activity the students score would go into this gradebook item um, one limitation that i think is there is that i don't see any place where you could see a dashboard of the individual responses uh, that students made to the various interactive questions that you put onto the video uh, so that's another limitation of this it's not like you're going to do a lot of data analysis you know students would basically get a grade out of 10 based on the correct and incorrect answers that they made throughout the video, that that score would be added to the Moodle gradebook. And I think that's pretty much the level of what you can see in terms of, you know, how students did. So that's a limitation. Uh, and the closed captions uh, is a limitation. Um, if we um, um, well, anyway, I've got to look into, because that um, student submit your grade was working fine on these ones that I set up uh, this morning at 1.30 in the morning.
Um, so I'm not sure why it's not showing up on this one. Okay. So um, we are a little bit past four. I will stop the recording.